The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Mark. At that time, John preached, saying, After me comes he who is mightier than I, the thorn of whose sandals I am not worthy to put down in a time. I have baptized you with it, I baptize you with water, but he we baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And when he came up out of the water, immediately he saw the heavens opened and the Spirit descending upon him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my beloved son, with you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Free invitation. 
I don't reply his words very clear. Thus saith the Lord, hope everyone who thus come to the waters. And he was normally come by and eat, come by wine and meal, without money, and without the price. Yes, that is our God who invites us that we don't have to have money to be in the Lord. It is a free invitation. We are welcomed to the water, the water of the river, the water of baptism, the water of our repentance, but it's a free invitation. We are invited to hear the word of God, to be able to experience God among us, Emmanuel, who has been born in the world and in our hearts. Yes, we are reminded in our past reading to see the Lord now. To see the Lord now that He may be found. And are we not sure? Come, eat, drink. What is it that we are eating? What is it that we are welcome to drink? It is the power of God. And the power of God, we get it from His Word. The word that we have read from our past reading, when it comes down, it does not return to him empty. Yes, it is implanted in my heart and in your heart, so that it leaves a mark, an imprint that will help us to live very well in our hearts. How I wish that later on we could go and read that reading and read it more carefully and see that invitation. It is a free invitation. Those who can remember the day of the baptism or the day of the baptism of your children after we have been now Satan. You reject Satan with all his ways and you say, yes, I reject him. You believe in God the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit and we say, yes, I After that, the minister of baptism, the deacon, the priest, or a bishop, ask us and ask even the community, do you want to be baptized in the faith that you have just confessed? And the community says, do you want these children or this person to be baptized in the faith that we have just confessed? And when we answer in the community, that is only when our child or ourselves and therefore, it is a free invitation. It is our own free will that brings us to be able to live well with our God. And that is the free invitation that the Lord is inviting you today. We don't have to be forced. You don't have to be pushed. You don't have to be pulled to come. And the only pull, the only push that we need is the push of faith, the push of love, is the push of gratitude that brings us. The second reading from St. John's first letter, chapter 5, and verse 1 to 9, it is talking to us believers. And this, this reading is telling us believers who are born of God. Follow God's commandments. And they are not burdensome. God's commandments are easy. Doesn't Jesus Christ tell us? Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will, I will make you. I will change your minds. I will free you from your minds. He says, Learn from me and take my yoke, for my yoke is easy and my burden is nice. Yes. Some people may see the commandments as being a burden. But the burden of Jesus Christ, of our Master as believers, is not. It is faith that helps us to overcome. It is faith that helps us to overcome the world. We are being reminded that we do not belong to the world. If we really know that we love God, then we are mistaken. And for this love of God, it's for this love of God that we keep His commandments. And His commandments are not bad. But for whatever is born of God, overcomes the world. 
But if who is that overcomes the world, it is he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. And as we believe again, we are talking that we profess before we are baptized. And that's really, we are told by St. John, there are three witnesses. Just like we talk about the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy. St. John tells us that for baptism in our faith, there are three witnesses. And these are water, blood, and the Spirit. And it says that these are three, three great. And therefore, when we are looking at these three witnesses, the Spirit, the water, and the blood, then we can say, really, we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. The water is the fountain of baptism. It is the fountain of baptism. Where me and you are baptized. Where me and you are born in a new life. The spirit is a spirit in which descends upon us and we become children of God. We become children of the Most High. What about the blood? The blood is like the blood of Jesus Christ, the one that He poured for us on the cross. That through his blood then we are saved. But also, when we believe in God, at times, because of our belief, we may be asked to pay the ultimate price. Like the martyrs, like the first martyr St. Stephen, who had to die because of his faith. Or like the Uganda martyrs. Or like some of the saints that our patron saints, like St. Bonnet, is a martyr. And therefore, here the blood is the blood that sometimes we, as believers, have to share so that we can witness to Jesus Christ who is in our Master and Lord. But when we allow ourselves to be master of the world, then we cannot be part and parcel of these witnesses of spirit, water, in blood. Again, we say, faith helps us overcome the world. And this is the testimony of Jesus Christ himself that we see him at the cross. Giving us his all that we and you can have eternal life. When we get this eternal life, our responsibility psalm is reminding us this as we read our expository psalm from Isaiah to the Lord. It is telling us, with joy, you will draw water from the well of salvation. With joy. Yes, with joy. You will draw water from the well of salvation. And this is why I say from the very beginning, you cannot have joy, you cannot be happy in your place where you have been forced, where you have been forced. But when you are free, then you can have the joy. And that's why I say, joy, you will draw water from the wells of the gospel. And we pray today. Remember, it is only the three gospels of St. Mark, St. Luke, and St. Matthew that talk about the baptism of the Lord in a very, very uh, explicit way. All of them talk about Jesus being baptized in the river of Jordan. Today we read the Gospel of St. Mark, chapter 1, and verses 7 to 11. And we start with the opening of telling us about John's baptism. And John's baptism, as we know, was a baptism with water, but the baptism of repentance. He was the coming all who were coming to him to repent of their sins, to turn away from Water, but he says there will come 
in 
the life of God. In the life of God that we get by Himself. And how are we going to share with His life, the brothers and sisters? I want to share a few points that show us the God the Father. After introducing to us Jesus Christ, He is sharing His life with us. At creation, God shared His life with us. We became and we are co creator in Him. But at the incarnation, the incarnation which is God becoming man, that we are celebrating these days for Christmas, God Emmanuel, we are taught how to live with God. God is us. Born as a little child in Bethlehem, in a venture. He lived in the home of Nazareth with Mary and Joseph. And therefore, God has become man. God has become one like us. And therefore, we can see, we can touch, we can walk with him, we can live with him because he has taken our own flesh through magic Mary. And therefore, God is sharing us his life by making Jesus Christ one of us. Coming down from heaven, as we read from Let us say, Paul the Greatness, chapter 2, and verse 1 to 11, that he came down from heaven. Yes, he was there, he came down from heaven. John chapter 1 and verse 1 say, In the beginning was God, and the one was God, and the one was God. This word is the one that is the English. God has become man. Therefore, God is sharing his life with us by he taking our own body, our own flesh. Number two, we see God sharing his life with us through Jesus Christ, through the obedience of Jesus Christ. Jesus accepts to be part of us. He accepts to be part of us. In the Old Testament, read many times, God is asking, who shall I send? Who shall I send? And Jesus Christ has sent me. Here I am, God. Send. In the olden times that we read in many parts of the New Testament, that God spoke to us through prophets, through kings, through judges. But in the last days, God has spoken to us through his only begotten son. This will be that Jesus Christ. Us. And therefore, in him telling us that he is the beloved son, we see there also the obedience of Jesus Christ. Thirdly, we see the humility of this son. The humility, the relative deliverance, we see that though he was in the form of God, Jesus did not count in quality with God a thing to be trapped, but he emptied himself. Reminding us, brothers and sisters, that we too who are believers are called the grace humility. Fourthly, we see the greatness of his son. This greatness is coming in he being able to come down and be able to do great things for us. Without fear, without fear. He is able to reach us. He is able to reach even the high and the mighty. During his trial, when he asked, Are you a king? When he asked, Are you a king? What does he say? Yes, I am a king. And for this reason, I want I came to this world. The greatness of Jesus Christ is seen in these words of God introduced him to us as his life time. Fifthly, we are now sure that he is the anointed one. He is the anointed one. And with the anointed one, the Messiah. He has come, as we really look at the poor, and verses 16 to 17, echoing Isaiah chapter 61, verse 1 to 2, that he has come to preach the good news. He has come to heal those who are sick. He has come to feed those who are hungry. He has come to reconcile those who are separated. He has come to pronounce freedom to those who are happy. Yes, he is the anointed one, the Messiah. 
This words of God the Father are telling us all this. And lastly, a very important for me and you. Because it reminds us when we are baptized and we give our new life to Jesus Christ, that when God is talking to us and revealing to us that this who is baptized by John in the, in the Jordan is his beloved son, the one who is pleased with him, is telling us that we are sharing with God the Father in the life of grace. The life of grace. And that is it. We, who are only the nature, the human nature, receive the supernatural grace that makes us sons and daughters of God. We are reconciled to ourselves, to ourselves. we are reconciled to our brothers and sisters, and we are reconciled to God. If we look at the cross of Jesus, the cross that for many, many years, and for many people, was a sign of defeat. For us who are believers, the cross of Jesus Christ is not a sign of defeat, but a sign of victory. Because at the cross, Jesus has saved us. Jesus has saved you. Jesus has reconciled you with God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Remember therefore, the baptism. And this baptism, see God sharing his life with you. Let me see God sharing his life with me as he becomes man through the incarnation. As I am called to obey God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. As I am called to humble myself before God and believe that he who is able to be a child reborn of the Virgin Mary. To see the greatness of Jesus Christ and the greatness of me as the son and the daughter of God. To see that when I am related to the Messiah, the anointed one, therefore I too can go and I'm called to go in mission, to preach the good news, to go and heal the sick, to go and reconcile those who are separated. Yes, we are not here as Christians. We have heard here the leaders, especially in the last week, of both that they are saints. It's not as a topic. All of them, especially after the last home of Mama Hannah, the mother of Mother of the Bible, they were all talking about unity. They were talking about reconciliation. How I hope that that is true. How I hope it was not only as part of the moment because they had the platform. The mind of the city. Yes, we need peace, we need reconciliation, we need unity. But for us as Christians, it's not with us. Therefore, when I'm, I'm related to the anointed one, with the Messiah, I'm able to bring peace. Remember the prayer of St. Francis? Lord, make me the instrument of your peace. Yes, that is why I'm baptized. I am not going to go out and speak here like the politicians. A Christian doesn't have to wait to be out there. May my life be an example of peace. May my life be an example of renunciation. May my life be an example that I am able to go and feed the hungry. I'm able to go and be the sick. I'm able to, able to go and visit those who are in prison and those who need my help. And I am to them. Therefore, my life is Telling me, my brother and my sister, that I have a new life of grace. And this life, new life of grace, is the one that helped me to celebrate this feast of the birth of the Lord with joy, knowing that in my master, you are baptized, and he is the son. You will be a little bit of a kid, you will be a little bit of a kid, you will be a little bit of a kid, you will be a little bit of a Ni lazima niishi maisha yangu kila siku kama yule ambaye mimi nimebaki ili maisha yangu yawe tofauti na wale wengine ambao hawajamjua Yesu Kristo leo hii katika hizo kubwa kwa wale wa Yesu Kristo basi ndani ya rika anapo niambia 